The time has finally come. We are just days away from what people are claiming will be one of, if not the best, WrestleMania of all time. And the match card is officially set. And so far, it is looking like that prediction may be true. Almost every single match on this card looks like it could be solid at worst and banger at best. The stage is being prepared. It looks a little bit small and disappointing, but the show will still be bigger than ever. And with that said, let's get straight into the predictions. Starting with the match that is rumored to be opening night one of WrestleMania, we have the winner of the 2024 Women's Elimination Chamber match, the man Becky Lynch, taking on one of the most dominant women's champions in WWE history, the woman that has been champion now for over one year, our mommy, Rhea Bloody Ripley. This storyline has kind of picked up over the last two weeks. In my opinion, it's not that great. I think a lot of people can agree. They tried to make it personal by bringing up Becky's kid, but to me in wrestling, that's just overplayed and like it just felt like it was out of nowhere. That doesn't bring spice into the storyline like they could have. But despite the story being lackluster, it doesn't even matter because the match will absolutely be amazing i just know it will it will be just like how charlotte and rhea ripley was last year where the storyline going into it was very lackluster but the match we just all knew it would be great and it was so for this match to be starting wrestlemania it has to deliver and it will but as for the winner of this match it can realistically go any way either woman who wins is not a bad choice but i'm going with rhea ripley only because the fact of the matter to me is that whoever ends this one year plus title reign should be somebody who can actually benefit from it. And Becky Lynch, although she's not a bad choice, she does not need to win this at all. So with that reason alone, and just because we love our mommy, we're going with Rhea Ripley. The Intercontinental Championship match between the longest IC champion in WWE history, Gunther taking on the man who was trying to regain the momentum, the hype that he had one year ago in Sami Zayn. This is one of the least predictable matches on the WrestleMania 40 card. Either man can realistically walk out as champion, but there is just something in my heart that just says that Sami Zayn is not the one that ends this historic run. Sami Zayn absolutely deserves it after what he did with the bloodline last year or two years ago, however long ago. And I wouldn't be mad if he is the one, but this feeling inside me just says that Sami Zayn is not the one. And also, I think that the storyline that they're telling with Sami Zayn being trained by Chad Gable is all a setup by Gable that he's going to turn his back on Sami Zayn because he is jealous of the position that Sami Zayn is in. And the way that they went about it on a go-home episode of Raw with Gunther taking out both men was, I believe, a way to throw us off because historically on a go-home episode, the person that's going to lose is the one that looks stronger going into the pay-per-view. So yeah, I think that they're just trying to throw us off. I think that Gable will turn his back on Sami Zayn out of jealousy, whether that's during the match or after or even on Raw after sometime down the line. But Sami Zayn is not walking out of WrestleMania 40 as the Intercontinental Champion. The six-pack tag team ladder match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships. We have the Judgment Day taking on DIY, the Awesome Truth, the New Day, A-Town Down Under, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory, and the New Catch Republic. This one... Ugh. I don't want to spend too much time on it because there are just so many possibilities. But one thing I do want to point out is that I think that on commentary, they mentioned that the way that this match ends is when both sets of titles have been pulled down, which I believe is them telling us not directly, but hinting that there will be a tag team title split and that one team will grab the SmackDown tag titles and the other team will grab the Raw tag team titles. So in this match, I predict two winners. 
And I actually predict that those two winners will both be teams that are on Monday Night Raw. So whoever grabs each title, I don't know which one, but whoever grabs the SmackDown title, I just say they just easily move to SmackDown after WrestleMania. But the two teams that I predict will win this match are the Awesome Truth, because it just feels like that's kind of obvious. Maybe I'm wrong, but the way that they've been so good on TV recently, R-Truth deserves his first WrestleMania victory. So this is one way to do it. And the other team I predict will be DIY. And I think that DIY will more likely be the team that would just move to SmackDown. But either way, those are the two teams that I see winning this match. Brother versus brother. The dream match that these two have had their entire lives. Jimmy Uso versus main event Jay Uso. This one is another toss up because obviously Jay Uso is the by far more popular solo act, but I think that for that reason alone, I might have to go with Jimmy Uso because he definitely needs the victory more than Jay does because Jay will be fine with the loss. Jay has lost plenty of big matches to this point and he's still fine. He's still as popular with the fans as he's ever been. And I think that there is a 0% chance that we don't see some type of bloodline interference, most likely coming from the little brother solo. I actually predict that this entire WrestleMania will be filled with just interferences by bloodline members for certain matches. We know what those matches are. And it all starts right here with the Jimmy versus Jay match. And Solo Sokoa helps Jimmy pick up the victory against Jay. The six woman tag team match between Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi versus Damage Control members Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kyrie Sane. Another match that we don't have to spend too much time discussing. I think that 99.9% .9 of people know the end result of this match. And there are just two specific reasons why I say that the winner of this match will be who it is, being Team Good Girls, Bianca, Jade, and Naomi. The reason, number one, it's because of the Bianca WrestleMania streak. This is something that I've noticed over the last year that WWE is trying to make into a real thing. This is not a fluke. The streak didn't happen by accident. They are trying to make her the new WrestleMania attraction for an undefeated streak. And yeah, it won't be like the Undertaker streak, but so far she's been putting on some constant bangers at WrestleMania. And for that streak to end on a random last minute thrown together tag team match like this would just be ridiculous. So that alone is a good enough explanation as to why the team Bianca will not lose. But also Jade Cargill making her WrestleMania debut. That alone too is a reason why there is a 0% chance that she will lose. Now as for damage control, I feel really bad for Asuka because I believe that she has never won a match at WrestleMania. And for somebody of her star power, at least what, like seven years ago, who had this undefeated streak going on. And not only does she not win at WrestleMania again, but back to back losses to Bianca Belair. That's, it's unfortunate, but hey, that's where she's at. Team Good Girls win. Next up, we have another tag team match between the LWO members, Rey Mysterio, and the newest member, Dragon Lee, taking on Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. For this one, it's not an obvious choice either, but I'm going with Team LWO. Rey Mysterio last year beat Dominic at WrestleMania, but I think that Dominic will get his win back against Rey, but that will come in a one-on-one -on -one match, maybe at next year's WrestleMania, where it matters most. Maybe they'll do a hair versus mask match or a retirement match for Rey, but I think that Dom's win at WrestleMania against Rey will have to wait for an even bigger moment because this is a story or a match that was put together like within the last two weeks, like just out of nowhere. So I don't think that Dom's big moment of beating Rey will happen here. But if it does happen, I could see Carlito turning heel and costing the LWO this match because Carlito kind of looks shook a little bit jealous of the fact that Rey did not pick him as his tag team partner and instead went with the newest member of the LWO. And I think that Carlito will turn heel for that reason sooner than later. But I think that maybe they'll hold off on that until like SmackDown or maybe even after the match. But Team Rey Mysterio, Team LWO picks up the victory. Okay, so at this point, we will have the night one main event. But I'm going to hold off on this one until the very end of the video 
I'm also going to hold off on the Seth versus Drew match because I think that all of these matches are going to lead up to what happens in the end of the night two main event of WrestleMania. So I'm going to put them all together and talk about them all together in the end. So right now I'm going to skip over to night two. The WWE Women's Championship match between current champion EO Sky and the winner of the 2024 Women's Royal Rumble match, Bayley. This has been one of the best storylines leading into WrestleMania all the way from the start. Also, one of the most predictable matches that was going to happen. Not the end result, but we knew that this match was going to happen for a very long time. We may have not known it was going to be for the championship, but we knew it was going down. It's all about revenge. Bayley wants revenge on damage control for turning their back on her and EO Sky and the entire damage control wants revenge on Bayley because of the way that they feel they've been mistreated by Bayley over the past two years. And as for the storyline goes, I gotta be honest, EO Sky and Dakota Kai had an excellent reason to turn on Bayley because if you pay attention, Bayley was a complete asshole this entire time leading up to the breakup. So that's why when Bianca caught Bailey out on her crap, it made perfect sense why she felt that way. Because in real life, only in wrestling, does the person that got what they had coming to them ends up being a good person because they got turned on or whatever. But Damage Control had every right to turn on Bailey, even leading up to the turn, like that night and the weeks prior, Bailey was a constant a-hole to them. And so storyline wise, they're completely right like i see them as the good people but either way because this is not real life because this is wrestling and because of the fact that bailey doesn't have that one signature wrestlemania moment i say that she is going to walk out as the new wwe women's champion and well also because bailey she's a hometown girl from around the same place i'm from so maybe a little bit biased there so bailey new champion next up as of this moment, this match is just a one-on-one -on -one singles match between LA Knight and AJ Styles. Once again, a match that I think that most of us can agree on the victor, that being LA Knight. AJ Styles has no business winning this match. I don't want any interference or any excuse as to why AJ won. I want LA Knight to win this match clean. AJ is already a Hall of Famer or a future hall of famer his career his accolades his victories at wrestlemania they're all there already give this to la knight but the only other thing that i would say about this match is that this is also one of the best feuds going into wrestlemania and it's kind of weird that the way that they've been going about this feud with la knight going to aj styles's house or aj styles flying 16 or whatever hours just to prevent la knight from winning the chamber a storyline like this should be a no disqualification match at least but as of right now it's a regular singles match so la knight will win this match regardless the united states championship triple threat match between kevin owens the viper randy orton and the current u.s champion logan paul i don't have much to say about this one either i think that logan paul is going to walk out still as the champion I could see Randy Orton walking out as champion, but I see no way that Kevin Owens is the one that's going to win. But hey, obviously I could be wrong, but I don't think that Logan Paul is losing this match. I think that Logan Paul walks into SummerSlam still as the US champion, and maybe it's then that he will lose to maybe Randy Orton there or somebody else. But I don't think that Logan Paul walks into SummerSlam in Cleveland, not still the US champion. It seems like the theme for this WrestleMania is to just throw a bunch of random people together into a tag team match because we have another tag team match, another six man tag team match. It's a six man Philadelphia street fight between Bobby Lashley, Angelo Dawkins, and Montez Ford versus the Final Testament, Karrion Cross, Acom, and Rizar. This is a glorified SmackDown match. This match definitely doesn't have any business being on the wrestlemania card but at the same time well okay i mean that just because of the storyline but at the same time there's a couple of things i can say positively about this it's the fact that one 
And most importantly, Bobby Lashley deserves to be on the WrestleMania card, especially because of the way that he was in a pretty strange position last year. He was supposed to fight Bray Wyatt, and then Bray got sick, so we know what happened there. And they just couldn't find another place for Bobby on the card, so he missed out on being a part of the WrestleMania 39 card. So Bobby deserves it, and for that reason, I'm fine with that. But also, it's matches like these, at least that we've seen last year, that we go, okay, this is a bathroom break, but then it ends up being a banger, and this is a street fight, so I say that this is going to be one of the best matches of WrestleMania, just like that six-man or whatever it was, the showcase from last year, it's going to be this year's version of that match. But as for the winners of this match, I'm going to go with the final testament because that group they are a new group and they need this victory way more than bobby's crew because bobby and the street profits they'll be perfectly fine after wrestlemania whether they win or lose but the final testament they will look like a bunch of jokes and like so yeah need i say more okay so now it is at this point where i will discuss all of the connections that i see between the night one main event and both world championship matches so now i will go back to the night one main event between roman reigns and the rock versus cody rhodes and seth rollins where the stipulation has been added that if team rock and roman win then the night two main event between roman reigns and cody rhodes will be bloodline rules and if not if cody and seth somehow manage to beat rock and roman then night two is main event will be free of the bloodline or as so as the rock says now one thing that i've always had on my mind that was not brought up that i don't see many people discussing at all is the fact that seth rollins's match against drew mcintyre was never affected by this match this entire thing is seth rollins backing up cody rhodes to protect him from having his match ruined but seth doesn't get anything out of winning this match i mean maybe there's the personal thing between him and roman reigns that he hates roman obviously so there's that there's also the fact that this is seth's way of getting his dream main event at wrestlemania but besides that and seth never even mentioned that part either so yeah besides that seth's match the next day is not affected by the result of this match whatsoever whether they win or lose the bloodline is still free to interfere in seth's world heavyweight championship match against drew mcintyre and i don't think that this is a flaw in the story i think that this was done on purpose and brushed aside on purpose because the fact that the bloodline will indeed interfere in seth's match will have something to do with the way that the night two main event ends as well now as for the tag team match itself this has been in my opinion the greatest storyline heading into a wrestlemania main event of all time the social media post by the rock the blood that the rock gave to cody rhodes all, i mean just everything leading into it has been just beautiful and so for the winner of this match i'm going to predict that those winners will be cody rhodes and seth rollins making the night two main event as far as the rock's words say completely free of the bloodline now hear me out before you click off before you dislike before you comment that i'm an idiot hear me out cody rhodes getting the beating from the rock that he has gotten over the past two weeks at the end of raw has made me think that this is exactly how they will have cody rhodes be the one that pins the rock to get his revenge on Dwayne, and all this would do is infuriate the rock and the entire bloodline for that matter even more and the rock like he said several times he is the final boss he is their boss what the rock says goes so although he gave cody his word that night two's main event will be free of the bloodline i don't trust the rock one bit and that this match the night two main event will be full of bloodline interference regardless but i will get to that when it's time so now we're going to go to the next match the world heavyweight championship seth rollins versus drew mcintyre with cm punk on commentary as for cm punk's role in this match i say it's very minimal he's still injured and he still has a long way to go so there won't be much or any physicality from him 
I think that he's just there strictly for commentary. There might be a little spot where he stands up and gets in the face of either Drew or Steph or both. But as for physicality, CM Punk will play little to no role in the result of this match. But as for other people, like I said before, the bloodline, most likely Solo, maybe Jimmy as well. There will be some type of bloodline interference in this match and they will cost Seth Rollins the World Heavyweight Championship. And this will be a direct order from The Rock who is doing everything in his power to ruin WrestleMania for Seth and Cody at this point because he is upset about the way, well, the fact that he did not win his big return match on night one. And he is more evil and more diabolical than he's ever been. And he might even give Seth Rollins a beat down himself. So either way, whether it's a direct order or whatever, the bloodline will cost Seth Rollins the World Heavyweight Championship. And now, the night two main event. The winner of the 2024 Royal Rumble match, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, taking on, in an attempt to finish his story, the longest reigning WWE Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. And as I predicted, because of the result of the night one main event, this match will be free of the bloodline on paper. Every single member of the bloodline will still interfere, including The Rock, maybe even some new members. I don't think that's likely, but there will be a ton of interference regardless if it's bloodline rules or if it's a singles one-on-one -on -one match. This match should be a singles one-on-one -on -one match in my opinion anyways, because the match that they had last year was absolutely amazing. And having an overbooked bloodlines rules match does not appeal to me because we saw a preview of what bloodlines rules will be or would be in the Seth Rollins versus Solo match and a WrestleMania version of that would just be unnecessary. And like I said, it's going to be overlooked regardless. There's going to be interference either way. And on both sides too, Jay Uso and whoever, maybe Seth, whoever the case is, is going to be on Cody's side or going to come out to back up Cody, maybe Sami Zayn, anybody and everybody will be a part of this match regardless. Some people even speculate that Stone Cold Steve Austin and or John Cena may put their noses in the Bloodlines business during this match as well. I, I'll be honest, I will pop for that if it happened, but I don't necessarily want that to happen. But hey, it's wrestling, it's meant to be fun. So if it does, then like I said, I'll still be excited in the moment. Either way, I say that because of interference, because of all the madness that's going to take place regardless, that the winner of this match is going to be Roman Reigns. Yep, I said it. Roman Reigns will walk out of WrestleMania 40, still the WWE Champion. I say that it is entirely possible that Seth Rollins cost Cody Rhodes this match. I've mentioned this before in another video and I'm going to say it again. Just to clarify, because of all the reasons I said before, that Seth Rollins, his match for his world championship has nothing to do with the night one main event. Seth has no guaranteed protection. In fact, I say that the bloodline will 100% interfere in Seth's match and maybe Jay or somebody else will come out to save Seth, but Cody Rhodes will be nowhere in sight. And Seth, this entire time, has had Cody's back every single week including in the night one main event so for cody to not be anywhere in sight when seth needs his help the most and he loses everything because of that seth will do everything in his power to make sure that cody feels the wrath of the newest biggest heel in the company seth rollins and that is how i say that wrestlemania 40 will go down and it's going to piss everybody off. Well, except for me and Roman Reigns and Bloodline fans, because we're not going for Hulk Hogan's record. We're coming for Bruno because we are only in the bottom of the fourth. <laughs>